Clearly what Gabriel Attal had to say there has pleased unions enough that they've said they're going to suspend this. What do you make of that? What we're seeing here is a very interesting mix and coming together of different forces within the farming industry in France. First of all, you have the, the unions, the FNSEA, which is the most powerful farming union umbrella group here in France, uh, which has uh, given its green light this afternoon to lifting the blockades. Just before that, you had that address by Gabriel Attal, the Prime Minister. Uh, there are rumours that that address was made after consultations with the farming union so that Gabriel Attal would come out with pledges that the farming union was going to be in agreement with. On top of that, you have Emmanuel Macron, who's going to be speaking later this afternoon in Brussels, who's also been on the phone to Gabriel Attal. So what we have now is Gabriel Attal coming up, the French Prime Minister, with a series of measures to try to please uh, the farmers who've been blockading motorways uh, into the French capital and other cities around France, calling for uh, steps to make their lives easier, less red tape, uh, less subsidies, more ability for them to live off the land and to own, to earn their own living. Uh, then you have the unions that have agreed with what Gabriel Attal has said uh, today and have called for the lifting of the blockades. But there are other farmers who don't agree with what the FNSEA is saying, notably some of the more rural organisations who say, well, they want to wait and see until the government actually comes up with those measures. They say this is just uh, another way of sowing uh, a, a carpet that we're not willing to get on to fly away on because we don't believe that at the end of the day they're going to really go ahead with these measures. So I think we've moved forward on the fact that many farmers will be returning home. There's a lot of a wait and see aspect there to say, OK, we're going to believe what the government says, but is the government going far enough? The bottom line here is that it's not just a problem in France, it's a European problem. And what the head of the FNSEA has been saying in a press conference uh, just about half an hour ago is that the problem is with the European Union. The European Union needs to change its software. The European Union needs to stop imposing solutions on French farmers and other European farmers that they can't abide by because they just don't have the means to be able to respect those decisions. Uh, what they need is something uh, to uh, be able to survive, not to just be having measures given to them by technocrats in Brussels. And I think that is the message going forward this afternoon. OK, we're willing to, to lift the blockade, but we're still keeping a very watchful eye on what's happening both in Paris and in Brussels. All right, Philip, as you say there, these protests may be wrapping up here in France, but they're very much still going on in Brussels where there's still significant anger. Let's just show our viewers the scenes in Brussels earlier on today. Farmers there taking to the streets outside of the European Parliament, throwing eggs and stones at EU buildings. Some of them trying to tear down the barriers in front of Parliament. They were pushed back there by riot police. So, Philip, clearly... Significant anger still remains, and you mentioned it, the French leader, Emmanuel Macron, will address European leaders in Brussels later. What do you think he'll say about the European aspect of all of this? This is not an easy decision to have to make. This is very difficult because, there, uh, as the French uh, unions have been saying, there are two cut-off dates. The first one is the French Agricultural Salon, which is visited by people all over Europe, which is due to kick off on the 24th of February here in Paris. Uh, they want solutions, they want answers before that. Second date is the European elections. That is the date, I think, that everyone has uh, in the back of their mind in the European Union because they're saying, OK, elections are coming up in June. Uh, those elections could be swayed by the far right. All of this kind of action that we're seeing here is playing into the hands of the far right and the hands of Marine Le Pen here in France and other far right movements around Europe, some of which have already got a stronghold in certain countries. I think there's growing concern in Brussels that something's got to be done before those European elections. Otherwise, the, the, the far right is going to gain even more support during that electoral, that electoral period. So if a solution isn't found for the farmers, that is going to have a knock-on effect as far as the elections are concerned. And another aspect which is very important on the line is that here in France, for example, and I think elsewhere in Europe, there is very widespread public support, even on the sort of Soviet level. People are backing the farmers, backing their demands, are up to sort of 80, 90 percent of French people say, yes, we agree uh, that the farmers are right. They need to be better looked after. They need to be able to grow their own food. They shouldn't be victim to all these technocrats in Brussels who are imposing these measures on them that they can't abide by. Give the farmers some kind of leverage to be able to 
give them what they need uh, because our whole future, the whole production of food in Europe uh, depends on it. And I think that is the underlying message. So a lot that's got to be sorted out in Brussels. We'll hear more from Emmanuel Macron who's due to give a press conference a little later this afternoon. All right, Philip Tell, thank you very much indeed. And